This is Roosevelt Island in New York City, and it sucks. But not in the way you might think. Stuck between boroughs, designed to be a community without cars, and accessible by gondola, it feels a world away from New York's beloved bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. But the weirdest thing about the island is invisible. Namely, its winding network of subterranean trash tubes. For over 50 years, Roosevelt Island residents have relied on New York's only vacuum-powered trash system to keep their island clean without a single garbage truck rumble, which has created a whole host of problems for residents and maintenance workers alike. So how does this system work, and why exactly does it even exist? At two miles, or just over three kilometers long, Roosevelt Island is a narrow stretch of land that sits in the East River. But for most of recent history, the island wasn't much of anything. The city of New York bought the island in 1828 because it was, like, right there, and not knowing what else to do with it, started filling it with New Yorkers who got too sick or murdery. At points it had a prison, then the city's asylum, a smallpox hospital, a regular hospital, and just to keep things fresh, a prison hospital. So by the 1960s, officials understandably wanted to rebrand the island's image to be less penal colony and more anything that's not a penal colony. The mayor enlisted the New York State Urban Development Corporation to design a new plan for the island. The master plan consisted of three distinct neighborhoods and zero cars as a pilot to see if part of New York could simply exist without them, which meant rethinking the logistics of garbage collection. So the city turned to the country's leading expert in processing garbage, Walt Disney. The newly opened Walt Disney World in Florida had to solve a similar problem, whisking away trash without the hassle of garbage trucks. Consequently, Disney had designed the country's first pneumatic trash tube network, a system still in use today, and seeing as it worked for Disney World, the city opted to try out the system on Roosevelt Island. Known as the Automatic Vacuum Assisted Collection System, it was designed and built in 1973 by a Swedish company named Envac underneath two-thirds of the island to collect trash seamlessly and silently. For residents used to traditional garbage disposal, nothing changed. They still took their trash into the same garbage chutes located on every apartment floor. But after dumping their trash, Envac system took over. Trash then fell onto a large trapdoor in the basement, with the crux of the system residing in these red steel tubes located underneath each trapdoor. Five times a day, the platform moves upon sensing a large amount of trash and allows trash to fall into the red steel tube below. Then, turbines in each tube suck the trash out at a speed ranging from 30 to 60 miles, or 50 to 100 kilometers per hour, into a central collection point. Here, trash is shot into a giant red cyclone and separated from any air pockets, then to a compactor machine until it's as flat as can be, and only then is it trucked out of the neighborhood and dumped into a giant sprawling landfill known as Staten Island. Unsurprisingly, the system is significantly more environmentally friendly than traditional garbage collection, as it cuts up to 80% of traditional garbage collection emissions by using a giant vacuum to centralize waste collection, and it's still able to handle over 10 tons of garbage per day, all while being floodproof and ratproof and rat floodproof. So that raises a pretty big question. If this trash system is so dang slick, why is Roosevelt Island the only part of New York that uses it? Well, the thing is, to build a vacuum system underneath Queens, Brooklyn, or Manhattan would require digging up the foundations of most buildings to install it, which would be a bit of a pain for anyone in the city of New York who needs to use a building for something. And even at the small scale of Roosevelt Island, the system is certainly not without its headaches. After all, in the years since the AVAX was designed, Roosevelt Island has undergone some pretty significant changes. Where 200 pioneers once volunteered to live in 1976 now has a population of over 14,000, and it's not the car-free island that its architects envisioned, even if its southern and northern ends still ban cars. Because the trash system was built underneath just 16 residential buildings, this means that its real estate market is pretty severely limited, and the only option to house more people is to build upwards. And while Roosevelt Island's system has been successful in keeping garbage trucks and animals out, it's costly and dangerous when the wrong things get in. People have dropped Christmas trees, vacuum cleaners, and computers into the trash, which creates holes and weakens the tube's suction. And if this happens, mechanics have to physically crawl through the tubes to repair them. Roosevelt Island's entire system was only meant to withstand a 40-year lifespan, which it'll reach in 2023, and eventually the whole tubing system will have to be replaced. Since the system's 16 residential buildings are the same ones it had 40 years ago, rebuilding a new system could expand the island's limited housing supply, but it would still require laying new pipes underneath every apartment building. But until its eventual collapse, this plucky little series of tubes remains one of the most unique waste disposal systems in the world, as long as you forget about Europe and, like, most of Asia. 
And whether you're interested in trash shoot engineering, landfill logistics, or the weird science of trash decomposition, you can listen to audiobooks and learn about whatever floats your boat with our sponsor, Audible. I just finished listening to Secondhand Travels in the New Global Garage Sale last week, and let me tell you, the process of getting your holy t-shirt from Goodwill to, well, anyone who wants it is no walk in the park. I've never been more captivated by the story of a clothing supply chain. And with an amazing selection of books, from New York Times bestsellers to thrillers to business, you can find the best of what you love or even something new to discover either in their unlimited library or by using a credit to get literally any audiobook they have forever. Plus, Audible's new selection of titles makes being a member so much more valuable and gives everyone a chance to discover new favorites and new formats like their Words Plus Music series or even an exclusive podcast. So let Audible help you discover new ways to laugh, be inspired, or be entertained. New members can try Audible free for 30 days by visiting audible.com slash HAI or by texting HAI to 500 500.